Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Perspective. We'll be talking about the attack in Moscow, um, of course ISIS and its impact on terrorism globally as far as Pakistan also is concerned and overall its ripples across the world at this time. As far as ISIS as an organization is concerned, as far as terrorism is concerned, as far as the build up of terrorism around the globe is concerned. A little later on we'll also be talking about uh, Gaza and the latest there. Um, as the Palestinians continue to suffer at the hands of the Israel atrocities. Um, we'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about the latest position as far as the Red Crescent and related relief efforts there are concerned. All of that today um, on Perspective. I have with me AVM retired Ajaz Malik. Thank you so much for being with us, Thank the you. Senior Defence Analyst. We also have with us Brigadier Retired Wakar Khan, who is a Defence Analyst. Thank you for being with us. And Naila Chohan, uh, who is a former ambassador, thank you for joining us today. Before I go to uh, Ijaz Sabhi in the studio, let me start with Naila. Naila, can you hear me? Ji, Naila. I think there's a problem with audio. Ijaz Sab, overall, like I was saying, you know, this terrorist attack and what it means for terrorism globally and what it means for, uh, you know, particularly as far as Moscow is concerned, their ability to control or their inability to control terrorism within, um, you know, Moscow and Russia overall. What, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, we have to see this uh, hmm. particular attack in the context, not only global, uh, hmm. uh, but uh, in my reckoning, mostly uh, towards the regional environment of security mm. and uh, the rise in uh, terrorism mm. and which warrants uh, a response, mm. a response to avoid such situation to reoccur mm. or uh, damage control uh, mm. obviously. Uh, you know, uh, this ISKP which has uh, assumed the responsibility of this attack, mm. uh, its uh, uh, direct uh, mm. links or uh, its uh, uh, association mm. as far as the territorial uh, 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 area is concerned, it goes to Afghanistan. Mm. Uh, so uh, I have been saying right here in the same studio that uh, we need to develop a regional response uh, to cater for all the uh, threats which are primarily emanating from Afghanistan and uh, partially support of India, uh, particularly in the context of the attacks in Pakistan. So uh, not now as we are just focusing on the uh, Moscow attack, hmm. so uh, the Kremlin has uh, uh, you know, given its uh, attribution to uh, response towards uh, uh, Ukraine, hmm. whereas they have denied and they have we categorically said that uh, we uh, would not resort to any such uh, attack uh, on uh, a public or uh, uh, benign uh, uh, innocent uh, uh, masses uh, because it would uh, straight away uh, undermine our uh, support from uh, Europe particularly mm -hmm. and that of uh, other uh, mm -hmm. you know western countries and then America of course. So uh, they say that our objectives are very clear and mm -hmm. uh, they have earlier claimed also uh, certain military objectives uh, well within uh, uh, depth of uh, uh, beyond borders within uh, the uh, regions of uh, uh, Russia. So they say that they have denied this. Whereas uh, President Putin has of course uh, uh, categorically accused uh, uh, Kai uh, uh, for this. Yes, that let, me, uh, let me include uh, uh, Naila uh, in this also. Naila, can you hear me now? Naila? Okay, there's a problem with audio. G, Brigadi Saab, can you hear me? Brigadi Sab, there is, uh, you know, overall, as far as this attack is concerned, its ripple effects. Do you think it's going to change the way ISIS is being looked at, um, you know, and how much of it, and it's, you know, how much of it is actually a threat for the world at this time? And is it going to change, uh, how is it going to shape up the war against ISIS in the world, in your opinion? Mm. 
Brigadier Sahib, I can't hear you. You need to unmute yourself, please. Brigadier Sahib? Uh, Gee, I can hear you now. Okay. I was saying that the uh, hmm. space availability of mosque and Tashtar and Tash organization who hmm. did, uh, I was saying, ability super bad. Okay, Russia and the North is a hard part. So that's why when we come to Pakistan, you know, we make a lot of blame on the Jansi Pakistan. But nobody will really do this. Now coming to the motivation, this is that our being red in Russia and the other West. As far as I think the Western media is concerned, they are claiming that one day had warned the Moscow two weeks back that over to present the election, then we will pass the flag and maybe on the people in a constant, so that will be precise for it. So it means that they have picked up some emergence. Uh, so in case ISKP, uh, which has had quarter than Afghanistan is done it, I think this is very, very serious because now Afghanistan is becoming a region of more than then have to look into it. Uh, during Moscow tournament in Kazan uh, in September 2023 in, in Russia, he was there and then they Sahib, I, think, I think there's still distortion in the audio. We'll come back to you. I think they're going to fix that and come back to you. Um, Ajaz Sahib, you know, of course, like you were saying, as far as this attack shaping things uh, against ISIS around the world is concerned, do you think it's going to significantly change the way that the world has, how much of a threat ISIS is being seen around the world? Let's put it that way. Actually, uh, previously, uh, mm. after uh, uh, the threat uh, or the uh, perception about threat, I would say, mm. of Al-Qaeda, mm. uh, it started to diminish and mm. uh, the uh, ISIS was the new player. Mm. Uh, but it had uh, many question marks attached to it mm. because the objectives ISIS was pursuing, they were mostly against regimes in Muslim countries hmm. are the targets which they were undertaking uh, for their terrorist attacks, they were mostly in the Muslim countries. Okay. So uh, at that time, uh, many analysts uh, was, were of the opinion hmm. that uh, this is at best serves the new shape or new dimension of the American agenda to pursue American foreign policy objectives. Okay. Uh, and, uh, it is not per se, hmm. uh, you know, serving anything to the jihadi, so-called jihadi movement uh, globally. Hmm. And even in this particular attack, uh, you can see that uh, there is a, uh, you know, uh, American uh, point of view, the hmm. Ukrainian point of view, hmm. and uh, um, uh, Moscow. Has uh, it changed? It, let's it, it, let's it include uh, Naila. Yeah. Naila, can you hear me now? Ji, Ajasab. Uh, I think I will be the sole, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's, uh, let's participant let's tonight because of the communication. We'll be able to uh, so uh, resume. I stand privileged uh, in this, uh, you know, uh, awkward situation. No, I no. It uh, uh, there's also like you were saying. Do you think it's going to change things? For it should. As far as U.S. is concerned, let's talk about that, since of course it's the it's the largest, uh, you know, global player, so to speak. It's also you know world power. Do you think it's going to change how the world powers look at ISIS? Like you said, firstly, yeah. it was thought to be a threat mainly for the Islamic countries. Is that going to change now? Uh, uh, it would change or it would begin to change, I would say, hmm. once American interest is directly threatened. Uh, as long as, you know, these uh, uh, terrorist attacks they are uh, engulfing the interest of other countries, previously mm. the Muslim countries, and, and now mm. uh, we see the latest episode in uh, Moscow. Uh, I think uh, Americans uh, would not, uh, 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 they will involve directly uh, into any uh, uh, response mechanism mm. or uh, 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 to mitigate those uh, effects. Mm. But it should uh, 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 raise alarm in Beijing, uh, in uh, Iran, uh, in uh, obviously uh, uh, Moscow is uh, understood, mm. and then this regional bloc, uh, including Pakistan, they should uh, uh, of create a kind of uh, very solid uh, formal alliance to uh, look for uh, the mm. epicenters of mm. uh, such threats, 
which are now uh, mostly radiating out of Afghanistan. What about the U.S.? You know, of course, there's a there's a growing. We know that there's a growing conflict between the U.S. and Russia. Do you think it's going to? Of co- that's also going to play a part in having the world unite against the ISIS or no? Uh, not at this stage. I think uh, unless uh, there is a clear line taken by uh, either side, uh, we cannot uh, 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 do any prediction about that. Okay. Uh, and we need to wait for that uh, because uh, uh, IS uh, uh, KP hmm. uh, per se has haven't uh, given any you know their futuristic objective what agenda are they pursuing in this so region? it's not clear yet it's let not me clear. try naila yeah. again ji naila can you hear me ji maru i'm so sorry the telephone communication is not doing well um ji i'm so glad we can hear you now naila there's also we're talking about the effects at this time as far as us and russia on the one hand and of course on the other there's also this war this isis attack that we've just witnessed uh, in moscow which has killed at least 133 and of course wounded 140 or so people and uh, you know of course it's a huge uh, attack in that regard do you think it's going to have ramifications for the that region particularly and also for uh, you know the conflict between russia and uh, it and and the america uh, in america at this time is that also going to play a part that dynamic um, on you know perhaps increasing the kind of uh, uh, you know counter terrorism or increasing uh, you know uh, attacks on I- organizations like the isis uh maru it's a very complex complex situation right now because at one point you are seeing a russia ukraine war in which uh, nato has been involved and today uh, a us uh, missile a, a russian a russian missile uh, uh, went through uh, poland and it is now being asked how this happened and uh, most uh, uh, the poland uh, is also complaining against it they have made a uh, demand with the russian authorities but they did not respond to the missile because this they want to keep it as russia ukraine war and not escalate it with the rest of the uh, nato member countries that is on one point then uh, you have is uh, you know islamic state which is uh, apparently uh, taking the claim for it uh, but they have been making claims before also which were false to make them look uh, make themselves look more uh, potent than they actually who actually perpetrated that uh, uh, atrocity in moscow uh, because lebanon at this moment is also very volatile and russian support there against you know uh, is is also probably one of the factors that could have played in but uh, it's it's premature to make any judgment but i agree uh, with uh, your guest in the studio that a regional approach has to be taken because uh, if it is is then it cannot be one country that can deal with it it has to be all the regional country then even when it came to recognition of the taliban regime we had taken a regional approach so that is a good suggestion but uh, at this moment maruk the situation is so complicated particularly given the situation in in the un security council which russia and china vetoed so really it, it's like a spider web with linkages okay i'm i'm going to go to brigadi sir brigadi vakar can you hear me now i can hear you can you hear जी जी ब्रिगेडियर साहब देर इज यू नो वे टॉकिंग अबाउट द रामिफिकेशन एंड डॉक्टर नायला एंड एंड इजाज साहब ही अग्री 
that there is, you know, it's largely a very fluid situation in the sense that we don't know. Uh, we can't at this time say uh, what direction it will take. One thing is clear that, of course, this attack was huge and it will have ramifications for the region also and for, you know, globally also, of course, the dynamic between Russia and the U.S. also. Do you agree with that? Do you think it's going to, you know, to curtail it perhaps is going to need, uh, you know, combined efforts because this is certainly an attack which is not the first as far as ISIS is concerned? I think as far as the region is concerned, there is a there is a sensitivity about it. I was just mentioning, I'll connect it from there, that in Gaza, in, Gaza, in Moscow format, 2023 September, uh, I think all uh, neighboring states of Afghanistan were there, like Russia, Pakistan, Iran, Central Asian republics. And Mr. Muttaki was there and it was very clearly told to him that they have to shut down these factories and outfits of terrorism. So it means that there is a gradual uh, understanding uh, that in case ISKP or TTP or whatever is happen is uh, uh, active in Afghanistan, it can affect the region. And we have seen attacks happening in Iran also and now it's Russia. Now, Russia, Ukraine, uh, I think uh, war is also very important to discuss here because in war times, very difficult to really find out the truth because there will be, I think, claims and counterclaims. Now, if you look at uh, what has come up in the media, as far as the West is concerned, they are saying that, one, they had warned uh, Moscow I think two weeks earlier that uh, a huge uh, test attack is likely because they also passed it to their citizens and uh, you know issued a travel advisory. So it means two weeks earlier there was some clutter that they could pick up and they warned Moscow. And they also mentioned that probably it could be a concern. Now, so this is what is coming in the Western media. And now they are also substantiating that uh, mainly it was the ISIS and there are uh, ISKP. So it's basically because ISIS uh, mainly operates from Syria and ISKP operates from uh, the second branch from Afghanistan. So that is the perspective. Now Russian, uh, I think the response has been that no, uh, these were basically uh, whatever they are saying, Tajik terrorists, but it was sent by Ukraine. So Ukraine has been trying to overreach and trying to hit Moscow because of the war. So these are the two narratives. And then there is a third narrative also, which I don't believe that probably it was a false flag by FSB and uh, Russia would now go in for a huge offensive against Kyiv and uh, the area east of uh, the Dnieper River because they want to expand the war. And I think now there is also talk of Russia declared now oh, it's not a military operation but war. So, so these are the three narratives which have come up. But I feel that uh, the way Russians have captured uh, these four terrorists and uh, it was claimed that they were trying to now cross Russia-Ukraine defense line. So that is, I think, somewhat, uh, uh, you know, it's not very, uh, I would say, uh, convincing because in war times... Well, very Sir, do you think it's going to increase pressure on the Afghan government, uh, the Ta Afghan Taliban government also, with regard to clamping down on terrorism? Yeah, no? I think Pakistan should come in. And I think I've been also highlighting that uh, this uh, TTP network, which is uh, really focused on Pakistan, is not the only issue. Uh, this terrorism is going to expand, it's going to affect Iran, you know, China, uh, and now uh, we've seen it in Russian for So I think there's a lot of pressure which can be built up on uh, Taliban regime to stop these factories because ISKP ultimately is, you know, stationed in Afghanistan headquarters. And there are also, I think, if you bring in the Indian angle, uh, because uh, recently we had a visit by Doval's uh, boys uh, to, uh, to Afghanistan and it was celebrated on both sides like Taliban and India. Uh, it was said Taliban and India are bhai bhai and all that. So it means that India would like to incite and keep Pakistan and Afghanistan border on fire. Uh, so it, it means that uh, Taliban should now look into it because if ISKP, uh, you know, Gulbadar uh, uh, group or, you know, TTP start becoming international problem, then there's going to be a lot of pressure. So I, I, I agree with it. There's going to be a regional approach. There's already understanding. And Taliban uh, could be pressurized diplomatically, economically, and also militarily, I would say, in case it doesn't stop. Um, Ajasab, what uh, Brigadier Sahib is saying is he's saying it's, you know, it's perhaps going to lead to more pressure on the Taliban. Of course, you know, at this time when terrorism has been an issue globally also and particularly for our region also, that's uh, welcome news. But it's, do you think that it's going to, the presence of IS, IS in different parts of the world and, you know, of course the need to counter it is going to become a priority like never before, for example? Uh, it should have... Uh I because think this seem this might have a ripple effect anyway. You know the way this this attack has happened. Exactly uh, uh, because uh, 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 now probably is the time uh, of after this attack mm. it should uh, you know raise alarm and because now they have uh, 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 you know crossed that threshold that now uh, uh, they have shown their mm. outreach mm. to uh, 
country like mm. uh, uh, Russia. Mm. So I think uh, now there should be a growing concern mm. and uh, it should be on the radar mm. uh, of all the major powers. What about, uh, you know, of course, this will, uh, as far as this conflict itself is concerned, as far as Pakistan, Afghanistan, the t terrorism that we see coming through, do you think it will also have put some pressure on India, for example, the, the, the terrorism that we've seen come through, you know, from that side? No, India, uh, uh, you see, uh, pressure uh, has two shades. Hmm. One is the external pressure, the diplomatic pressure hmm. that uh, is exerted by various uh, uh, you know play, uh, players or mm. uh, stakeholders mm. and one is the uh, pressure which is perceived or which is taken mm. uh, unfortunately uh, american support and tacit approval of mm. a give, having given a blank mm. clearance to mm. new delhi uh, because of the uh, American interest in this region of containment of China. Mm. Uh, so, and uh, BRI and CPAC, all these things, you know, uh, they have given uh, a tacit approval to India and India would not take any pressure uh, at, unless uh, that pressure is from a formal entity, mm. uh, which I just recommended in the beginning of your talk, mm. Mm. that uh, because what happens after one incident, mm. uh, the concerned country uh, comes out, you know, vocally, and uh, uh, there is some pressure and s some, uh, mm. you, you know, talks for some time mm. till the time there is another big news globally, mm. Mm. and then uh, slowly and start, uh, you know, it's, uh, gradually mm. it starts to fade out. Mm. But if we have a formal regional commitment, then uh, China, Pakistan, Iran, uh, they will form a formidable uh, block, uh, including uh, the Central Asian states. Uh, at some stage, and that will be a real pressure on Afghanistan. Between Pakistan, China, and uh, you see that kind of a block. And yes, uh, for the regional security, specific to terrorism only. Okay. Uh, it should not be an overarching security which uh, you know should be perceived, uh, you know, as this a. This is between Pakistan segment. and China only. No, it should be between okay. uh, Russia, China, Pakistan, and Iran. You think perhaps there should be that kind of unity uh, against unity, terrorism. Yeah. Let Just like we have, uh, you know, ECO for yes. economic cooperation, mm. there mm. should be some forum mm. for cooperation against uh, growing terrorism in the mm. region. Let me let me go to uh, Naila. Uh, Naila, do you agree with what uh, Ijasa was saying? You know, there is that perhaps you know this kind of block may emerge in the future, because certainly you know we can, uh, particularly on terrorism, he's saying, if we look at China, Pakistan, uh, Iran. Um, and you know we see that then we might take Russia uh, uh, fight against terrorism and in the so in SEO you have Central Asian republics you have Russia you have Ta I can't hear you, uh, Naila. I think there's a problem again with the audio. Um, same question to you, Brigadier Sahib. Yeah, I think it, I'll pick it up from there and I will coming to that, that uh, SU already has a format. And if you look at the joint, ex I, I think even India is part of it. So it's basically a regional approach on terrorism already exists. The only thing is that when Russia, Ukraine war started last two years, so SEO's platform, uh, I would say, has been uh, somewhat diluted in terms of uh, anti-terrorism, uh, you know, cooperation. But uh, now in case, um, now we can see that Moscow has been hit. And uh, as I mentioned, it's still a military superpower and it's fighting uh, against NATO uh, and Europe, uh, Western Europe in uh, Ukraine. So stakes are, now, I think, very, very high. So I, I would go with the suggestion that the SEO's format against terrorism should be strengthened because then it revolves, you know, around all the uh, periphery of Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran, uh, China, and then, uh, of course, Central Asia and Russia. And even uh, you can include India in case, you know, they are wise. I, I don't think so. Uh, they'll be really looking at uh, you know, s uh, sorting out terrorism netting from Afghanistan because they would like to actually give it a fillip or uh, let's say uh, provide the match to the Taliban. And the last visit has seen that just after that there was increase in the spate of terrorist attacks and then Pakistan had to respond militarily. So, uh, so this is uh, one good suggestion. But because of, I think, Russia-Ukraine war, 
uh, the uh, the there's so much of polarization uh, in uh, in Eastern Europe and I think even uh, in the neighboring countries that is very difficult to really coordinate on one side Russia or China leading on the other side the US doing it uh, because I think now we have to see how uh, President Putin reacts because we have already seen reports as I think Ambassador was mentioning the Russians fired a missile which passed over Polish territory and hit the uh, Ukrainian uh, western part uh, I think in Lviv so it means that uh, it's going to flare up the conflict uh, Russia has already I think declared that probably they're going to be a major offensive against the capital itself, Kiev, and then uh, they will try to absorb area east of the Dnieper River, so it means expansion of war. So what uh, what shape, as you mentioned, uh, this uh, huge test attacks uh, finally leads uh, Europe to that is, I think, a million dollar question. Uh, we should also look at what is happening, I think, uh, connected with the uh, southern flank in the Middle East. I think you're going to discuss it, that how Gaza is shaping the uh, uh, rest of the Middle East and why there's need for accounting terrorism at regional level. Let me, let me go to Ijaz Sahib. Ijaz Sahib, of course, we also want to come to Gaza, but overall, as far as Middle East is concerned, you think that these conflicts, these wars at this time, this terrorism that is continuing, it's also going to have its own effect as far as Middle East is concerned, as far as, you know, the involvement of U.S. again, Russia, U.S. relationship is concerned, our region is concerned. Overall, it seems to be a time of Perhaps, you know, there's going to be more grouping, like you said, between, you know, a time for uniting against terrorism or no? Yes, there mm. should be. Mm. Uh, because, uh, you know, any such arrangement uh, is a logical uh, expectation under such uh, emerging mm. threats. Mm. And, uh, uh, I, you know, we have to see uh, the flashpoints in the world. Middle East has been a flashpoint and uh, all the same voices uh, post 9-11 have been saying, uh, even within uh, US, that uh, instead of trying to combat uh, hmm. terrorism hmm. at the places uh, hmm. of your choosing, hmm. you should address the root causes, those flashpoints uh, where, uh, you know, uh, the root causes. What do you think? What, what are the root causes? Let's talk about that. You see, the uh, uh, Middle East is one, uh, after uh, Second World War, hmm. uh, uh, Cold War era and, uh, you know, three wars in uh, hmm. uh, Middle East uh, in various times, 67, 73. Uh, that is one area uh, which, is, uh, which needs world attention. Uh, we, you have to resolve. Uh, those uh, issues, uh, those uh, burning issues. You think uh, that issues like what's happening in Gaza could be one of the reasons for this kind of, you know, terrorism that's really, um, you know, the way that, of course, we are looking at the treatment of, uh, you know, people in Gaza, the way that the atrocities continue. Uh, they could be interrelated, but it will be uh, very difficult to again suggest any conclusive uh, b uh, without any conclusive evidence uh, it is difficult to give any judgment on that uh, but internationally all these things are interlinked uh, mm. because it is like a chess game that uh, uh, one move uh, on uh, apparently a very benign move or mm. disconnected move mm. is uh, under the table it is connected towards some other objectives if Naila can hear me, I'd like to include her. Naila, can you hear yes, me? Yes, I can hear you. Naila, there is, you know, uh, do you think that this is, you know, I think Ijasa very rightly talked about going to the root causes of where this terrorism is stemming from, where it's becoming an issue, where it's coming, you know, the way that it is now, you know, of course, for a while been, become a huge issue for the world globally. Do you think that we are thinking about those core issues? Do you think that we are perhaps as a, you know, globally now, you know, actually having a think where, what are these root causes and why are they, you know, festering, so to speak? Well, uh, Maruk, this is again, I would say, a very complex situation because uh, the terrorism that you are alluding to is uh, what is emanating from Afghanistan uh, with uh, Daesh and with, you know, ISL and uh, TTP and all those activities that are going on. And the main reason seems to be the instability in that country and the failure of the regime to uh, control its own country, uh, to bring peace there and in the region. 
So as far as I'm concerned, the terrorist activities that you're alluding to basically are, uh, you know, emanating from uh, our Western neighbor, Afghanistan. But talking about Gaza, that is entirely a different dynamic. And there, there is so much of suffering of the Gazans, the Palestinians, and the outrageous approach that Netanyahu has uh, taken, that even in his own uh, constituency, people are now condemning him for his uh, approach. But I suppose this is his political agenda because he's also going into elections. And you were talking about USA. USA is also it's going into elections. Of course, but isn't it true that is you know it is largely it is being said that it is about about uh, the failure of the Biden administration to counter uh, you know to to not take cognizance of uh, you know or effectively censure uh, take part in trying to uh, you know stop this genocide. Isn't that also true? Uh, you wouldn't call it failure actually because this is their agenda, so they are successful in it. Uh, the international community has to now uh, isolate Israel uh, so that it can be named and exposed uh, on what it is doing. And now you can see even the resolution that was uh, tabled by USA was a very dilute uh, resolution. USA had vetoed uh, three resolutions before including uh, one from Qatar uh, and other Muslim countries as well, because in that they were calling for a ceasefire, a sustainable ceasefire. Here in the U.S. draft, they did not uh, say that there should be a ceasefire. They only called on the Israeli government to create environment for a ceasefire. That means that Israel has been given the prerogative to choose what steps it needs to take before it decides to agree to ceasefire. And that's why China and Russia vetoed that resolution, because that was a hypocrisy. So uh, this you know, gap between rhetoric and the actual on the ground situation is source of so much suffering of innocent uh, civilians, women, and children. Uh, Brigadier Saab, uh, as far as the Gaza situation is concerned, I think uh, Naila sums it up very aptly. But in terms of, you know, uh, Israel needing an external power to blame when it fails to achieve its political aims, uh, you know, it's going to, of course, not be, there's also recently there's a study that's t that talks about that, that it needs, an Israel needs an external power to blame, uh, you know, well, as far as its political conflict is concerned, its military, its military's failure to be able to achieve all that it can, uh, all that it can. Do you think it will, again, eventually be the Americans? Yeah, I think if you look at uh, post 7th October, uh, the way Hamas attacked Israel, and then there was a huge response. Uh, one was, uh, I think the Palestinians felt that they were being left out because of Abraham Accord, although it was uh, you know, basically manage that uh, Arabs and uh, Israel could sit together and solve this problem and there'll be normalization. But Palestinians felt that probably they will not get their right. So this was a desperate uh, move by them. And then we have seen uh, fighting, uh, denting of Israeli military capability. Uh, now it's almost six months. And uh, they have, as you mentioned, they've not been able to achieve really their political objectives. Uh, but Israel has also followed, I think we discussed in the last program, that the Haiba policy of basically uh, genocide against uh, consistently or successive uh, Palestinian generations. It has been happening. Every 10 years you'll find. But this is, I think, very, very, uh, this is, uh, I would say, crossed all the limits. Now, if uh, uh, Israel uh, had achieved its objectives, probably you would have seen uh, the end of war. But by and large, Hamas is still fighting, and then there uh, it has expanded. If you look at Houthis, look at Hezbollah uh, in uh, Lebanon and in Iraq. They are also expanding the war to Red Sea, and it has affected international shipping. Actually, started choking the international supply of, uh, you know, oil and gas as well as commodities. So, so it became a regional problem. That's why there was a lot of pressure from Russia and China that we have to stop it. Now, as mentioned by the ambassador, that uh, the resolution which was tabled by uh, the U.S. 
was uh, actually given a lot of uh, leverage to Israel to decide on their own terms. That's why it was vetoed. And that has been, I think, the tragic part of it. Even look at Russia-Ukraine war, inability of the international community to stop it, and now Gaza-Israel war because here the West is backing up the Israelis. And uh, we have the other side being supported by, let's say, Russia and China. So there's a lot of polarization. That's why we are not finding any, I think. Uh, but uh, if you look at the Arab world, there is an urgency like we had uh, Anthony Blinken's visit uh, to Egypt and I think most of the important Arab foreign ministers were there. And then uh, this has been sixth, I think, visit by Anthony Blinken because the amount of flake the U.S. administration, Biden administration is getting in, West in, uh, you know, continental U.S. is huge. So there's becoming a challenge for their elections also. So let's hope that sense prevails and at least you know, the situation is safe because now we've lost 32,000 Palestinians including one third is uh, I think children and women and uh, most than 70,000 uh, injured or crippled so it means more than 100,000 and the total ordnance delivery is uh, equal to more than two Hiroshima uh, atomic bombs so this is the kind of ordnance that has been delivered and it has been telecasted live uh, in front of uh, entire international uh, audience. So so this is the tragedy uh, which has to stop. I, I feel that now the pressure would mount and maybe in the near future we find at least the ceasefire taking place. Ijazab, do you think that perhaps, you know, what Ambassador Saab is saying, perhaps we can witness a ceasefire sooner rather than later as far as Palestine is concerned? Yes, I agree with them. Uh, if you recall about two weeks back, even uh, Netanyahu had given a statement uh, that... Uh, it would be a, hmm. a, another, f then he mentioned about 45 to 60 days uh, that uh, we should see hmm. Uh, hmm. Uh, an end to this conflict. Hmm. So uh, I think uh, whatever objective they have set, uh, they are closer to that. Talking about American, uh, you know, it is a paradoxical situation for uh, hmm. uh, Biden administration. Hmm. On one hand, hmm. uh, they are supplying arms to their, uh, you know, you know um, hmm. uh, uh, very close. And on the other hand, they're talking about aid. On the other hand, they're talking about aid and, hmm. uh, you know, suffering of uh, hmm. uh, uh, humanitarian, you know, humanitarian cause. Cause. So uh, this is, I think, uh, hmm. a, a, a very shameful uh, situation hmm. for a country like America. Hmm. And this is... Uh, 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 I think now is the time that word, sh uh, and there are indications that word is now taking a renewed uh, and, and a vigorous approach towards some kind of uh, resolution. Uh, uh, even uh, the um, president from uh, France has said, he yes, mentioned that we will times, table yes. our own uh, mm. uh, uh, this uh, resolution uh, in the UN, UN Security Council. And Russia and China, of course, they are very. Uh, clearly vetoed and, and they said that this is just a very benign kind of a suggestive uh, uh, political statement and not... Uh, Do you uh, think it's more or no? It is like that. It Do is. you think it's just a political... It is, it, it, it is because uh, if uh, it is unlike Americans in other conflicts where the Americans wanted an action uh, you know, the tone was different. Mm. Uh, the body language and the uh, narrative which were built before mm. uh, tabling any such resolutions, mm. uh, they have amassed word, uh, you know, mm. coalition forces mm. in Gulf and in mm. Af uh, Afghanistan mm. based on uh, such resolutions. Mm. But here, uh, that steam is missing. It is just an Lip eyeball. service, it seems yeah, to be exactly. more of lip service. Exactly. To what is, you know, a, hu a huge number of deaths, people dying, children dying, it's catastrophic, really. Uh, actually, Maru, uh, in conflicts, hmm. uh, there have been deaths earlier also hmm. uh, uh, in human history. But do you think they've been as but, documented? But not as documented, hmm. being shown alive hmm. uh, in such kind of media savvy environment. But the question is, how can the world, I mean, it's... A, Maybe it's a very simplistic or naive question, but I think at some point we all do need to ask ourselves this question. But you see, there that are voices in how America. How long are we going to the watch this barbarity live? Speaking. How long is the world going to continue to watch this barbaric display of, exactly. you know, exactly. inhumanity and just not do anything These about are it. not only Muslims. These are non-Muslims in America, the, both Democratic and uh, the Republicans who are uh, speaking mm. uh, against Israel. Mm. Uh, but still, because uh, American uh, support for Israel... But is it just about, Brigadier Sahib, is it, you know, at the end of the day, is it about political clout? Is it about, you know, your 
global power, how much that means to other countries, for example, the US-Israel relationship, that's what it seems like, right? Yeah, I think I'll 100% agree with you, but as John Byshamer says that uh, in uh, real uh, real politics, this is all power. And if you look at the shaping of the global environment, it is mainly done by larger power, like seen in Eastern Europe and in Gaza. So it's their own interest, how they perceive it. And in case Israel has to be pampered in the Middle East, they'll keep pampering it despite, you know, uh, an open genocide taking place uh, in front of the entire world. So it's, just, it's a very, very unfortunate. The only difference is that now we have parallel powers like Russia, China, and uh, some of the other developing nations in BRICS, uh, and even uh, very, uh, very uh, wealthy uh, countries in Middle East, which can exert. Unfortunately, even OEC couldn't, you know, cross a certain line. Had they joined hand together, I think this war could have been stopped. But it's all again based on interest, and that's why you need to be economically strong to uh, uh, do it. Fair enough, uh, Naila. Your quick comments. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. Oh, well, uh, it is a uh, very Sad situation. Uh, the U.S. continues to uh, support Israel because the Biden administration is at this moment more concerned about uh, his re-election. And as you can see, the polls are showing that Trump is doing well. So Biden is desperate and therefore cannot afford to stop supporting Israel for his own electorate. Now, that uh, is affecting U.S. position vis-a-vis -vis Israel, although Biden did say that Israel has now gone over the top, an expression that the uh, U.S. would never use against Israel. But this time they did. And yet Netanyahu said, I have made my own red line, and my red line is once the whole of Hamas population is destroyed, and Gaza is taken. And now there's also fighting in Lebanon. So they are expanding left, right, and center. They're not going to stop uh, at Gaza. They're talking about greater Israel. So their agenda is very different from how the world is seeing. We have to be very careful. It's not the Belfort Declaration, Israel, which was a small enclave in Palestine. It is now Palestine, a small enclave in Israel. So the situation is very dire. Right. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much for being with us. Naila Trahan, thank you for joining us. Brigadier Retired Bakar Khan, thank you for being with us. Uh, AVM Retired Ijaz Malik Saab, thank, thank you, you so much for joining us today. As far as Gaza is concerned, certainly it is a situation that, uh, of course, has we have seen the kind of deaths that continue, the kind of violence that is, uh, you know, of course, unparalleled, the humanity, the barbarity that is continually at play and is, is you know, live uh, telecasted for the world to see. Yet it seems that the world continues to watch as far as the world leaders are concerned. They continue to pay what is essentially lip service to what's happening in Gaza as people, as children, as women are martyred every day. And we certainly hope and pray that sense will prevail and we certainly hope and pray that, that the world leaders could rise above their world politics and the world clout that they perceive to, to do what is right for the world, to do what is right for humanity, to do what is right for the people, the women and the children that are being massacred every day. Thank you so much for joining us today on Perspective.